it. This is it. This is going to be the last time we talk about... The, well, it's not going to be because you know it's going to come up in like different videos and questions from subscribers and stuff. But this is the last time that we are going to talk about this this extensively. YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, was the two-point conversion attempt the right call? It's something that so many of us have gone back and forth with. We got our opinions on this side. Y'all got your opinions on that side. And, and we have had so many different conversations, some constructive conversations and some not so constructive conversations. But everybody has their own opinion on this. Was it the right thing to do? Was it the smart thing to do? Now, initially, y'all know how I felt about it. Initially, in the heat of the moment, I hated it. I despised it. I thought it was a terrible, terrible move terrible decision and I just I did not like it and then I, I've been seeing a lot of people say oh well if the Ravens would have got it you would have liked it no I would have liked the result but I did not like the decision I did not like it even if they would have got it and that's been my stance all year long even if there if there's something that I don't like that the Ravens do I let it be known I don't like it even if it works I still didn't like the decision now I obviously hope everything works out for them of course but that doesn't mean I'm gonna like every single decision that they do but with this one, in the heat of the moment, hated it, didn't like it, didn't agree with it whatsoever. Then after taking some time to really think about it, after taking some time to really just really digest it, really just let it marinate in my mind for a little while, I still hated it. <laughs> so not, not, nothing changed with it uh, on my part. And, and my reasoning for why I didn't like it was because that's it. That's it. That ends it right there. Either gain, either you win, yeah, or you lose. Oh, but my my thinking on the whole thing is it's a little deeper than just that whole you win or you lose, because it shows. And and Harbaugh actually doubled down on it because we always talk about how actions speak louder than words, but Harbaugh doubled down on his actions, which spoke just as loud as his words. But his words made his actions speak volumes because after the game they asked, wait why'd you do it why'd you do it Harbaugh what was that for well because I didn't feel comfortable going into overtime without Marlon Humphrey I didn't feel comfortable going into overtime with our cornerback our secondary situation in the shape that it was in so what does that say to your players what does that say to your players I didn't feel comfortable since we lost Marlon Humphrey, we didn't have Tay-Tay playing. I didn't feel comfortable in you, Jimmy Smith. I didn't feel comfortable with you, Anthony Averitt. What does that say to the players for the right then and there? And what does that say to them for the future, too? Because Marlon Humphrey's going to be out. He's going to be out probably for the rest of the year. It still hasn't been confirmed officially, well, at the time that I'm recording this video. It hasn't been confirmed officially if he's going to be out for the year. But with Harbaugh, if Harbaugh says somebody's going to be out for a while, they're going to be out for a long time. So we're not expecting Mar Marlo to come back this year. But seriously, what does that say to your players? What does that say to your team? Like, man, in, in the clutch, if we would have went to overtime, Harbaugh didn't trust us? Because he already let you know that by being like, all right, let's go for two. We're going for two. But then in the presser, when he said that, he gave them a reminder. I don't trust you. I don't trust you, defense. I don't trust you. And that's to the players. And that's also to the coach, too. To wink. I don't trust you. And I know that people are going to be like, oh, well, the Ravens, they gave up, what, I think 17 points in the fourth quarter alone. After holding that team to three points through three quarters, everything just imploded. That's why you got guys running into each other, Ravens running into each other. Um, just, oh, things started getting ugly. And, and remember, the Steelers actually dropped a touchdown pass. They actually dropped one. So I, I had actually forgot about that. When I was thinking about the game, did the post-game thoughts, did the recap all that, I had actually forgot about that play. But... It just shows that he didn't trust them. So when you don't have big trust for your players, players remember that kind of stuff. And when you say that too, you say it publicly. I didn't trust y'all. I didn't feel I didn't feel comfortable going into overtime. 
They remember that. And the players, everything starts from the top. Starts with the coach. So the confidence that he gives those players, it makes such a big difference. It's not the end all be all, but it makes such a big difference. Now, I know people been saying, hey, you play to win. You play to win. You can't play scared. The Ravens were playing to win. I wouldn't expect anything different from the Ravens than to go for the two. I can understand that. Ravens have been a very, very aggressive team. Very, very aggressive team. Now, there have been some times when we felt like, oh, I don't think they should do that. There have been other times where we felt like, oh, yeah, they should do that. And sometimes in those situations, they go for it. And we're like, oh, yeah, let's go. Come on, Ravens. They're go they going for it. And then there have been other times when it's been like, no, no, uh, go for it. But they don't go for it. So it just all depends. Now, something else that I've been seeing a lot of people, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of people say. The Chiefs game. They bring up the Chiefs game at the end of that game where the Ravens went for it. And some people have been like, whoa, you, you, you can't have liked this call if you didn't like the call in the Steelers game. You can't, you can't have both. You can't like one but not like the other. It's the same thing. No, it's not. It's not. And with the Chiefs game, that was a call. Y'all can go back and watch the video too. I like that call. I was a little hesitant. Should they go for it? Should they not? Should they go for it? Should they not? You know what? Okay. If they, they going for it, I'm with it. I'm with it. They going for it. I like that one. Now, completely different scenario though. Completely different scenario. Had they not gotten it, the game is not over. It's not over. The Ravens were up. They were up. In the Steelers game, the Ravens were not up. They could have kicked the extra point to tie and head to overtime, but they were not up. In the Steelers game, they were down, and they went for two, and again, this is all or nothing. In the Chiefs game, it was not all or nothing. It wasn't. Now, the Chiefs, they were, the Ravens were on their own 42-yard line. So the Chiefs, if they wouldn't have moved the ball at all, then that would have been a 60-yard field goal. If the Ravens wouldn't have gotten it and the Chiefs didn't move the ball at all, it would have been a 60-yard field goal. So they, the Chiefs, they would have had to obviously get the ball and they would have got it because the Ravens wouldn't have converted. And then they would have had to move the ball just a little bit, not too much. They would have had to move the ball just a little bit and to, to kick a game-winning field goal. So it's not all or nothing. Because you can, if, if you don't convert it, it's like, oh, that, that puts a lot of pressure on your defense, especially against a Patrick Mahomes and that Chiefs offense. Who had got you throughout the game? There were some times where you stopped them too, but that's such a, a powerful offense. And they just needed a couple of yards. But still, they still needed those couple of yards in order to get in game-winning field goal position. And then they would have had to kick the game-winning field goal. And their kick is pretty good. So would he have made it? Probably, but we'll never know. But the situations were completely different. And again, if Ravens don't convert on that fourth down against the Chiefs, the game is not automatically over. It's not automatically finished. It's not automatically done. But if they don't convert against the Steelers, that's it. That's a wrap. Game is finished. Why'd they even go for that onside kick? I mean, you, you already gave the game away when you decided you wanted to go for two. Now, you got the people who said, again, play to win. And I, I respect everybody's opinion. I don't agree with it, but that doesn't mean that I don't respect your opinion. So please, I hope there's no, because I, I see some people, just because I feel a certain way about it, I see some people, they, they, they try to make the whole thing disrespectful, and it's really not. People are allowed to have different opinions on stuff. They're allowed to have different opinions on stuff. Nobody has to resort to name calling. Nobody has to resort to, be, resort to being disrespectful. Nobody has to resort to any of that stuff. It's really not that serious. I got my opinion. You got your opinion. Other people got their opinion. It's okay if we don't all agree. It's okay. It's all right. Because some people are, oh, man. You, you, you. No, it's, it's not that serious. But anyway, 
Um, with people, uh, some people were saying go and f- go for it. Uh, again, play to win. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we uh, again, we know, like we talked about earlier, the Ravens are very, very aggressive. They've been this way really since 2019. 2019, that's when we start seeing, like, especially we all know the infamous the Seahawks game. We we know when when Lamar goes like that. Oh yeah, baby, let's get it. I ain't see him do that in the Steelers game uh, last night, but anyway, when Lamar goes like that, then it's like, okay, all right, cool. Um. And, yeah, the defense, they, again, 17 points, one quarter to the Steelers, who you had been doing so good again. Something else that I've been seeing people say, oh, man, um, there's no guarantee that our offense would have drove down the field and got a touchdown. And, hey, who knows? We, we might not have even stopped the Steelers. We'll never know because they weren't even given a chance to because the head coach – did not trust him. Didn't trust him. Didn't even give them an opportunity to, to go to overtime. Didn't even give them a shot. Nothing. Say, you know what? No, nope, I'm, I'm not doing it. All right, let's go. All or nothing. Now, one thing I will say. I think something that, excuse me, not that it makes it right, but it makes it a little less risky in the grand scheme of things. Um, uh, and my guy JT, he originally pointed it out to me that he, he said that he thinks if the Bengals would have won yesterday, then Harbaugh would have never went for it. If the Bengals would have won. But they lost. So it was almost like, again, still doesn't excuse it for me at all. But it was almost like Harbaugh was playing with house money. He's playing with house money. Because if he and the Ravens lose, then they drop. They they go to eight and four. And now they tied with like 20 other AFC teams who are like eight and four right now. Now, before the recording or during the recording of this video, the Bills play the Patriots tonight. The Patriots are currently eight and four. The Bills, I don't even know what their record is. But the Patriots right now are the number one seed in the AFC. Sitting at eight and four, they have an opportunity against the Bills to go to nine and four and just and really be the number one seed in the AFC. So we'll see what happens. And then, and then I know there've been some Ravens fans. They're like, "Oh man, because I, 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 as a fan, what a lot of people do, they try to comfort themselves when stuff is rough. So they'll be like, "Oh, you know what? Uh, we don't want we don't want number one seed anyway. We remember the last times we had the number one seed. We ain't do so good. We don't want number one seed anyway." Remember 2019, we had number one seed. Then remember with Steve McNair, I think it was 2006, we had number one seed. And look what happened both times. So, oh, to, to AFC South teams too, to the Titans and the Colts. Well, shout out to that. But anyway, I, 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 I disagree with that. And again, I, I just, I don't, in my opinion, I, I don't think that uh, just because the Bengals lost, um, I still don't think it was a smart call because, in my opinion, you should try try to get a, a, a firm hold. Try to give yourself some leeway, some space, in order to hold it down. Because, say for instance, they they could have been at nine and three right now. I mean, who knows how overtime would have been? They could have lost in overtime. They could have won in overtime though. But again, it was something that we'll never know. But if they would have won. Uh, they could be sitting at nine and three right now, and even so, regardless, I, I I love and again, this is not normal Ravens football when this happens because that's why again, 2019 was fake. It was a dream. It was not a real season, but it's it's a beautiful thing when no matter what anybody else does, it doesn't impact you. No matter what this team does, no matter if this team wins or loses, no matter if this team loses or ties, no matter if this, no matter what happens, you're not impacted because you took care of your own business. I think that's one of my biggest things with this whole thing. The Ravens, they they just they don't take care. They, they don't put themselves in a position where they they can take care of their own business. A lot of times they got to rely on this. They got to rely on that. They got to, and I, it's football. 
So it happens. It's NFL. So it happens. But still. But anyway. So, yeah, man. That's 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 my thoughts on it. Um, hope for anybody that was confused. I don't think anybody really was confused on my thoughts at all. But hope this clears it up. Because I know, I know there have been some people that, hey, well, hmm, what about the Chiefs game then, buddy? What about them Chiefs? What about when we went forward against the Chiefs? I hope that that cleared up how I feel about going forward against the Chiefs. Because, again, like I said, I liked it. I liked the call against the Chiefs. And again, you, you can go rewatch the video. I like it. You can go rewatch the live stream from that game. But, um, yeah. So, we know Harbaugh. He's very, very gutsy coach when it comes to certain stuff. When it comes to certain stuff, he's very gutsy. Uh, when it comes to other stuff, like hiring guys, he's not very gutsy with that. He goes for the more comfortable moves. But whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. Team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. We out.